Good morning, Dr. Rafa. Um, since we've already covered your background, training, uh, education, experience, I'd like to direct your attention to the particular topic of uh, the mechanisms of failure for these orthopedic devices. All right? Okay. All right. Uh, what are some of the mechanical or biological mechanisms, um, or what are some of the mechanical versus the biological mechanisms uh, of failure? Um, there's a, a, a variety of different mechanisms of failure that, that fall under both categories. When we think about mechanical failure of a device, we're thinking about um, things that, such as fracture, fatigue fracture, things like that, corrosion that occurs. When we think from a biological perspective about how materials may fail in the body, we're thinking about inflammatory response, um, the body's rejection of the material, the creation of fibrous capsule. We also have to consider the, the biological environment, the pH, um, oxygen concentrations in blood, and things like that. So all of these sort of all together um, can affect failure of an implant. Okay. Now, in your current job, are you responsible for selecting the alloys used in the production of these orthopedic uh, implants? Absolutely. At Dow Cement, that is my main responsibility. Okay. And, and what, is, what, what is the concern that you have in the selection of those alloys for the uh, selection for those orthopedic? devices? So uh, one of the main criterion uh, that we have to consider is the, the strength of the material and the, the mechanical integrity of the material. Um, so that becomes very important in how we treat the material and the consequent uh, mechanical properties. But also important is um, things like the what the alloy is composed of, if there's anything that's going to be released from the alloy that could be toxic or damaging to the, the person. And then, of course, we have to consider the biological environment, as I mentioned, and think about corrosion um, and corrosion of the material and, and the consequence of that. Can you tell the jury what some of those alloys, uh, alloys are and what they're made of? Sure. Um, Certainly stainless steel, uh, Type 316 stainless steel is one of the materials that, that uh, we currently use. Also cast cobalt chromium based alloys, um, which essentially is, is a metal composed of cobalt and chromium. Um, also some titanium and titanium alloys um, and tantalum materials as well. What's meant by the term interaction of failure of mechanisms relative to the orthopedic implants that we've been talking about? Well, it's just the idea that there could be multiple things that are at play that cause the material to fail, not just one thing. And that, you know, in, in an isolated situation, that one thing may not have caused failure, but combined, having multiple events take place can cause failure. And why is it important to understand this combination of, of mechanisms or failure of mechanisms? So it's critically important to understand um, these mechanisms because these are this is this is the environment to which this material is being placed. So it's critically important to consider the load on that material and also the biological environment. Okay, so you've spoken about the, defor the deformation and overload fractures with, in terms of combinations. Uh, what is a fixation device? So a fixation device is a device that's typically used to hold two pieces of skeletal uh, bone together. And the idea is to hold them together long enough and so, uh, to let bone grow in between so that the, eventually the bone can function on its own. Ideally, it's uh, best to take the fixation device out after uh, the bone has healed, um, but it doesn't always happen. Okay, well, let me, let me direct your attention to plaintiff's exhibit A here. Would this be um, what you're referring to in terms of a fixation device, a uh, similar fixation orthopedic device? Yes. Okay. In this example here being plaintiff's exhibit A, was this the device that you understood to come out of uh, my client, Mr. Coker's neck? Yes. And this is called an H plate? Yes. All right. Did you inspect the H plate, though this ECDAC plate number one? Yes, I did. And you're familiar with the term ECDAC plate number one? Yes, I am. Okay, how were you familiar with it? Um, I was, I inspected this plate and that's what I was informed of where it, where it originated from the ECDAC Corporation. Okay. Now, now, after you inspected this plate and in consideration of your job as a senior research assistant um, and considering your background and training, what is, what's your opinion as to the most suitable uh, metallurgy or composite material for this type of plate? Um, 
based on what I observed um, and the use of this plate, stainless steel seem, in my opinion, is the appropriate material for this particular application. Why wouldn't another alloy be more suitable, such as titanium? Um, I, stainless steel has a lot of uh, very good properties. Um, it's, it's currently being used as fixation devices in, in clinical treatment. Um, it's got uh, very good mechanical properties, um, and it can be processed in such a way that we can increase those mechanical properties. One of the drawbacks to a material such as titanium, as you suggested, um, is the fact that it doesn't, it's not as strong as stainless steel. But in addition to that, um, many of the alloys that are composed in titanium contain vanadium, which is a, an element that is in the alloy, um, and that has been shown to be toxic to patients and cause Alzheimer's disease. And so, generally speaking, we don't want to use a material that contains a toxic element. No further questions. Thank you. Thank you.